So I'm a freshman in high school, right? I'm just getting out of my class. The bell is just rung and everyone's getting up, packing up their stuff and leaving. And I'm packing up my stuff so slow, bro. So slow. I'm taking my time. I'm chewing gum. I got my headphone in so slow because I'm waiting. I'm waiting for this girl that I have a crush on, Sarah, for her to come into class about five minutes later, whenever her class is about to start. I'm about to be late to my next class, by the way, literally so I can just see this girl for a second, just for a second and say some dumbass shit, bro. Not even anything of importance. I'm just like, hey, you do the homework. I had the, the Riz game was on the floor, bro. Bottom of the barrel Riz right there. I would do this like every other day when we had this class that was right next to each other, just so that I could wait and see her for a second. I was the kind of guy where I'd lie in bed at night Right? So, so craving female touch that I would just be looking up kissing guys. <laughs> I wanted to know exactly how to do it right, bro. And there'd be a little wet spot on my pillow from where I've been kissing it for the last 10 minutes, pretending it was this girl. <laughs> like that's embarrassing, I know, but this is where I was at at the time when I was 14, right? And eventually I settled into a relationship with someone. It wasn't Sarah. It was a different girl who I didn't think was as cute, who I didn't like as much, but you know what? I was struggling. And so I would take what I would get. And I wasn't happy because me and this girl didn't really vibe together, right? But you know what? I was in that relationship for like a year and a half. But I did it, bro, because I didn't know how to flirt with other girls, how to get the ones that I wanted. So whenever one came along and made the first move, I just took her, right? And I stayed with her because I was like, when is this going to happen again? What a shit mindset to have now that I'm looking back on this, bro. Like, But in college, everything changed, right? Because flirting was my fucking minor, bro. It wasn't communications. My minor was flirting. <laughs> because I was interested in it, right? I was no longer gonna live the same life that I lived in high school. I knew that I was gonna make an immediate change. So throughout college, I was either in a long-term relationship where I was really fucking happy, or I was flirting with lots of girls. And like, I was serious about this shit, bro. During, during my senior year, I was writing papers about flirting. I was making podcasts about flirting. <laughs> Maybe I'll share those one of these days. My academic research. And now after every date or appointment that I go on, even if I didn't really vibe with the girl or I didn't really like her, she's still having an amazing time, bro. And I know that because they're texting me afterward telling me that, or on the date, they're already trying to plan the second date, or they're doing anything they can to keep the date going. It's just these little things that you can tell, like other guys aren't doing this. You are fucking standing out. And this is where I want you to be, bro, because imagine for a second that you were the kind of guy who actually fucking cleans up. Every date that you go on, you can tell that she's not only having a great time, but she's telling you it's the best date that she's been on in years, if not ever. She's smiling at you and finding any reason she can to have her hand on you. This is what you could have had already, but honestly, bro, you've been shortchanging yourself because you've listened to all the advice from these pickup gurus out there, right? And there's all different conflicting things and there's nothing fucking working because you don't know what to do. And almost all of it's bullshit anyway. Right? The advice out there on dating is this shit right now. And with all this conflicting shit, you haven't known what to do, so you haven't actually taken action on anything. But that ends today. My name is Luke Grenoble, and you found yourself among a gang of young men, no longer settling for the monotony and depression that living in life with average social skills affords you. If that sounds like something you want to be a part of, hit subscribe right now. And I'm going to tell you exactly how to start taking girls on the kind of dates that are unforgettable. I'm going to give you the exact steps to get there, but first you need to know a few things. First of all, you have to realize going into it that the goal is to give her as amazing of a time as possible so that you both feel incredible afterward. And the only way that you are going to be a good date is if you are also having an amazing time. You have to be making fun for yourself. And when you are having fun, she's also naturally gonna be having fun too because you're just a fun dude to be around. And maybe it's, it's a bad thing, but honestly, your ego just feels good whenever you have girls begging for another date with you. Maybe that's awful, but I, I don't feel like it's a bad thing to feel good about yourself for making another person's night fucking amazing. And the biggest thing you can do to make that happen is just to be present in conversation. You already know to meditate, bro. It makes everything in your life better. But on top of that, it makes you a better date because all the other guys are going to be on a date thinking about Fortnite. They're going to be on their phones. They're going to be thinking about their friends. You are going to be locked the fuck in. You're not going to have any thoughts in your head. Everything that she says, you're going to be understanding and responding to in the moment, spontaneously. So start practicing in conversations with friends, right? The next conversation that you have with a friend, try to focus on every word that they say and have no thoughts in your mind other than the mental pictures that their thoughts are starting to give you, right? And when you realize that you're getting another thought, take a deep breath. <sighs> Regain that presence. 
and think only of what they're talking about again. This is probably one of the biggest things that you can do to make your dates go from a six to a fucking 11. I'm giving away all my secrets here. Okay, the mindset you have to have is to be a gentleman in the things that matter and a dick in the things that don't, right? When I say this, I mean, you are opening the door. You are being kind. You are genuinely listening when the conversation is serious and you're paying for everything. But when things are not serious, it's just regular conversation, right? You're being a bit playful. You're not taking things too seriously. You're teasing her with a smile. You're not answering every question seriously. Oh, where are you from? Bennington. That's not fun, bro. <laughs> Tease her, answer things playfully. I'll give you an example of this. The last time I went on an appointment, we went to go get tacos, right? And uh, we went up to the register, ordered our tacos. And then I'm like, oh shit, my wallet. You got this, right? <laughs> and I look at her, give her a little smile. And then I go up and pay. Because of course I'm going to fucking pay. Of course I didn't forget my wallet. But for a second there, she thought I was gonna be a dick. And that's that push and pull, bro. You want to have that feeling of push and pull on your date whenever you are being playful like this. You want to make her think, what's this guy's fucking deal? But every time you want to come back and prove that you are the sick guy, you are going to give her this amazing experience. But it's not that big of a deal. You're being playful about it. Next, on a date, you have to always be leading. You are the lead. I'm assuming that you're a masculine guy watching this. Or you could be a masculine girl. It doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. What matters is if you are the masculine versus the feminine. And if you are the masculine person in this relationship, you have to be leading on the date because the person who is more feminine wants to be in the moment, enjoying the experience. And while you could do this too, you also have to be the one who is in the lead. You have to be the one taking the responsibility of thinking, okay, what are we gonna do next? How are we gonna get from point A to point B? And what this does is it sets the tone for the rest of the relationship. That this is how it's going to be. Whenever she is with you, she can just enjoy herself. She doesn't have to worry if shit's handled because she already knows going into it, it's going to be. And it's not about being the dominant guy or about being fucking putting someone in their place. It's not about that shit, bro. What it's about is being genuinely caring and setting up the kind of relationship that you both want to be in. Show her that you handle shit and that you are grateful for her being there. The last point that I want to go over before I give you step by step of what to do is breathe, bro. You have to fucking breathe because right now you're nervous and you're going to come off as that needy energy whenever you go into this date because you're worried about the things that could go wrong. You're worried about what she's thinking about you. There's no reason to worry, for one, bro, because nothing bad could come up this day. Sure, maybe you could have a bad day, but really, what is that going to matter in a couple weeks? It's not. You both aren't even going to remember it, if that is the case. But really, what you have here is an opportunity to, one, get to know a girl and possibly meet someone that you really want to date. Or you just have an amazing fucking date. The thing is, the only thing that's going to last is the upside, right? If you have a bad date, so what? It's a bad date. Move on. If you have a great date, oh my God, now you have an amazing memory with a person. Or you have a girl. Bro, both of those things are great. It's all upside. You have nothing to lose. So use your excitement right now because it's not nervousness that you're feeling. It's excitement. And use it to hone in. But remember to fucking breathe. And not just a little breath. <sighs> Into your fucking balls, bro. Okay, step one. And this is huge because 95% of guys aren't going to do this. Plan the fucking date, bro. When you're taking this girl out, go to multiple places, right? Three places is best. You can do that in just a few hours because people are bonding over experiences, right? Not the amount of time that they spend together, but the amount of experiences. The more fun places you go and the more things you do together, the more different locations, the more environments, the longer it'll feel like you've known each other, the closer it'll feel like you are because you've had these experiences together. You're gonna get comfortable together quicker. What I'm saying is don't just go out, eat somewhere and then leave. Have a plan for this. Go to different places. Ideally, do something physical with her because you want to break the touch barrier. And it can be hard whenever you're sitting over on this one side of the table and she's sitting over on this other side of the table. You're like, so, what do you do for work? <laughs> That's not a fun fucking date, bro. <laughs> so do something else too. Do something physical. Go dancing. Go for a walk. Do something with drinks, right? Because nightlife scenes or just having drinks puts you in a more flirty mood just because of the environment. Not to mention the alcohol too. And no one fucking does this, bro. But take out a sheet of paper and plan it. Each location that you're gonna do, the thing that you're gonna do, and then the time. Just a rough estimate about what time you wanna be going and doing things. This little bit of structure is gonna make sure that you actually have fun shit to do. And you're not just thinking, oh, I don't know, we can just drive around some. That's what every guy is doing, bro. You're not like every guy. 
So plan it out. Keep a note card with your plan in your pocket. A note card, bro. Don't put it on your phone because you do not check your phone on this date. The only thing you do is glance at the time. That's it. Your phone's not even on the table. If someone texts you, no, they didn't. <laughs> and go for a nighttime date if you can because there's going to be more sexual tension. There's also just going to be more shit to do. And daytime also works, but it's always going to give off more of a friend vibe. So step two is being authentic. This is actually on this date. So keep in mind presence, leadership, and playfulness, like I talked about earlier. And loosely follow your plan, right? If you plan to go to a pizza place at eight and then go watch fireworks at nine, you don't have to do things exactly by the books at the exact time. If you're an hour off, bro, it doesn't matter. If you're enjoying it, keep doing it. And if you think that this is kind of fizzling out, like that you're ready to go on to the next thing, go a little early. That's okay. Now is not the time to be strict. It's the time to be in the moment. And how fast you move with this girl on this date is going to be dependent on both of your comfort level. I usually like to go for a kiss on the first date. And that's usually where I keep it because honestly, I don't know if I like her enough to have sex with her on the first date, right? I don't get to know her enough by then. But you can escalate to that if you want to, you dog. <laughs> be straight up with your intention, always, especially if you're asked. Because it's okay if you just want to flirt and have sex, or it's okay if you want to be in a relationship. Both of those things are great, bro. I'm going to tell you a freaking secret, bro. Girls want to have fun. Girls want to have sex too. They just don't want to do it in a way where they feel bad about themselves or they've been lied to. The last thing in this step that I'm going to tell you is to respect her 100%. But if she isn't respecting you, and honestly, bro, I'm telling you this because you're this far in the video, right? You probably like me or you're probably already in my gang. So I can say shit that's like a little bit controversial, but not all women deserve your respect. If she isn't going to respect you, you don't have to respect her back, bro. You can choose to be the bigger man because it will make you happier in the long run. And that's what I always do. But don't just take shit. Grow a pair and stand up for yourself. And this is going to be different from shit test, right? I'm talking about her constantly nagging on you, constantly like saying shit to you that's just not right, bro. That's rude, disrespectful. If this happens, you can just kind of leave. Say the most polite thing you can. It's been, it's been great getting to know you. I got to head out. But thank you for taking the time to come see me. And then just peace out, bro. Step three of this is post date, right? After you're done with it. Decide based on the feeling if you want to see her again. Don't think tactfully about it. Don't think she liked horror movies and I liked horror movies. So I'm going to see her again. Even if you aren't feeling it in your gut that you want to, right? Because if you're just using logic and your gut's not there, you're coping, bro. You're coping just so that you can see a female. Only go back and go on a second date if you genuinely feel like it was a fun time and you both connected and it was fucking sick. Because I'm telling you, bro, you can date girls that you like to spend time with and are cute. You don't have to choose one or the other. You can enjoy spending time with a girl and think they're attractive. So if she passes gut check, this is a fucking hack for next time. Date two, remember the things specifically that she said on date one that she liked or talked about a lot and do those things. It's going to show that you are a caring fucking guy. What I do when I do this is I act like I didn't do it on purpose. If she talked about she loves Boba on the last date and now I'm like, okay, we're meeting for Boba, let's go. She's going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe you did that because I said that. You actually listen to the things I say. And I'm like, nah, I just am really craving some bursting coffee bubbles right now. And if this is a girl that you really like, after date two, you're really vibing with her. Keep a notes app, bro. Keep a note in your phone of the things that she likes, of ideas for future things that you can do together. Because this is how you actually start to act on the shit that she says. You don't just have to rely on memory. You can come up with ideas, write them down. And this is the last part I'll add into step three is for long-term relationships, right? If you're in a long-term relationship right now, or if you end up getting with one of these girls, the name of the game for your dates is going to be loving, tailored, and abstract. What I mean by this is you're going to be incredibly caring on the date, right? You're going to be present. You're also going to be very physical with her. The next thing is your dates are going to be tailored specifically to things that they like. That's what we just talked about, right? But the last thing, and this is huge, it's gotta be abstract. And what I mean when I say that is do shit that you haven't done before. Do shit that she's never done with any of her past boyfriends or anyone she's seen. You want to start doing this new shit that she's never done before because it's going to make the relationship feel fresh. It's going to make it feel exciting because you're not just going out to a coffee shop. You're going to jump off a waterfall. You're going to buy some canvases and finger paint each other. You're going to dress up like you live in the 80s and you're going to go out to the Taco Bell. You can take these ideas if you want, but come up with your own, bro, specifically things that you want to do that are creative and do them with her. What I used to do when I was in a long-term relationship is I would just take a sheet of paper and I would brainstorm ideas for like 15 minutes. I'd fill up a page just with cool, fun, exciting shit, abstract shit that we would do together. So these are the secrets that no one else is telling you because people are obsessed with the perfect line or just saying the right thing. You don't have to have the line, bro. 
That's not what matters. What matters is that you are the type of guy that you love being and that she loves being around. So steal each one of these mindsets and tactics. Like this video and save it to a playlist so you can come back and implement each one. And I don't usually do these kinds of videos, but comment down below if you want more Luke Sage advice on dating. And if you want to have a completely changed dating life, click the top link in the description right now to see if we'd be a good fit for my social coaching because yes, lining up dates and flirting also falls underneath that. And I cannot wait to see where you are going to be in just a few months of following these tips, bro. So act now and become unstoppable.